Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today we are going to be talking about accounts receivable and uncollectible accounts. I'm going to do this in two parts. In this first video we're going to talk about accounts receivable and uncollectible accounts in general and look at the journal entries that we make um, when we're accounting for uncollectible accounts. And then in the second video, we'll look at some of the details as to how we come up with the amounts and the allowance for, for uncollectible accounts. Okay, so on your screen, we have a reminder that there are two methods of accounting for uncollectible accounts. But before we do that, let's just remind ourselves, accounts receivable come about from transactions with customers. Um, so you sell something to a customer or you provide a service and the customer hasn't paid you yet. So that's your accounts receivable. We sometimes use um, the allowance also with notes receivable, but for today we'll just concentrate on accounts receivable. All right, so there are two main ways of accounting for uncollectible accounts. The first one is the direct write-off method, and the second is the allowance method. Now remember that any company that has significant receivables is going to have some uncollectible accounts. Um, there's no getting away from that unless you only choose to sell to customers that have very, very um, high credit or perfect credit. And in that case, you're losing out on a lot of sales. So um, businesses accept the fact that they're going to have some uncollectible accounts. Um, it's part of the cost of doing business. So the first method of accounting for these uncollectible accounts is the direct write-off method. And what that says is that when we find out somebody's not going to pay us, then we write it off. We get rid of that receivable. Um, now, this method is not generally accepted accounting principles because it violates the matching principle, which we'll talk about in a minute. So small companies that have insignificant amounts of receivables or um, uh, for taxes, we use direct write-off method. Okay, so basically the direct write-off method is very simple. You record your receivables as usual, and if a customer is not going to pay you, then you simply debit bad debt expense, and you credit your accounts receivable. Okay, so that's easy. Now the allowance method is what we use for all of the financial statements that you see for public companies and the companies that you're probably studying in class. All right, so... When you have, um, when you're using GAAP, you have to use an allowance. And the allowance for uncollectible accounts is set up to hold the estimated amount that you think will not be collected. Okay? So it's the estimated uncollectible accounts. All right? Um, and what we do is, at the end of the year, we make an adjustment to set up this allowance for uncollectible accounts. And then during the year, if some accounts become uncollectible, we write them off. Okay, so there are two ways of applying the allowance method, the balance sheet approach and the income statement approach. Now, it could be if you're in financial accounting, you may only be studying the balance sheet approach. Um, if you're studying intermediate accounting, you will need to be knowing both of those, okay? All right, so let's take a look at some of the details here. So here's our allowance for uncollectible accounts. This is a reduction of your accounts receivable. Now, accounts receivable has a debit balance, right? So the allowance, which is a reduction of your accounts receivable, has a credit balance. So it's normally a credit balance. It is a contra asset account. So at the end of the year, we credit this account and it has a normal credit balance. So it's going to have a credit balance when you're creating your financial statements. And then during the year, uh, if accounts become bad and we're not going to collect them, then we debit this account to write off accounts that have gone bad. Okay. All right. So it's, it's holding estimates and then actual bad debts are debited. All right. So let's look at some examples of um, how this works. All right, so we're going to take a look at the balance sheet approach first, okay? So what do we do? At the end of the period, we take a look at all of our receivables and we decide how many 
what amount do we think will be uncollectible? Okay. And we make an adjusting entry. The adjusting entry always looks like this. Okay. Doesn't change. It's always the same adjusting entry. You debit bad debt expense and you credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Remember, adjusting entries always affect one income statement account and one balance sheet account. So this is an income statement account. It's, it's an operating expense. And this is a balance sheet account because it's a contra asset. All right, so now how do we decide how much to record in that journal entry? So here are the steps that we're going to take. The first thing we're going to do is determine the required balance in the allowance. So there's two different ways to do this. Some problems are going to say 5% um, of your receivables are uncollectible or 2% or 1%. And then you just multiply that percentage times the amount of your receivables. Other problems are going to have an aging of accounts receivable where you have different percentages for different age groups. And it's the same procedure. You just multiply the receivables in that age group times a percentage and then you add them up. Okay. So when you get, when you do this multiplication, that gives you the required balance in the allowance. Next thing we want to do is, so we'll, we're going we're gonna to do this in a minute. We'll see how much is in there and then how much we need to put in there. So then we look at the current balance in the allowance. See, so remember the current balance could be a debit or it could be a credit. Why? Let's go back here again. Let's say, let's put some make-believe numbers in here. Let's say last year we estimated our bad debts to be $10,000. It's not going to work that well here, but that's okay. But then our actual bad debts turned out to be $8,000. Let's give some space here. Okay, so we estimated $10,000, but our actual write-offs were only $8,000. So what is our balance going to be at the end of the year? Our balance is going to be $2,000 credit balance, right? But what happens if the reverse happened? What happens if we actually wrote off $10,000, but we had only estimated $8,000? Then what happens? Well, what happens then is we have a debit balance of $2,000, okay? So at the end of the year, depending whether you overestimated or underestimated the amount of write-offs, you could have a debit balance or you could have a credit balance before adjustment. Okay, so now let's go down here. And so now what are we doing? We say, okay, we want a certain amount in our allowance at the end of the year. Then we go and we look to see how much is in there. And then we're going to make an adjusting entry to fix it. Okay, our goal is whatever this required balance, that's what we want in our allowance at the end of the year. Okay, if you have a credit to begin with, then you're going to subtract. If you have a debit, then you're going to add the two together. And we're going to see that when we do the actual adjustments in the next video. Okay, then we prepare the adjusting entry. When we're all done, our receivables look like this on our balance sheet. We have accounts receivable minus the allowance for uncollectible accounts. So this is a reduction over accounts receivable. This amount here is called net realizable value. Oops, sorry, went to the next column, but that's okay. Net realizable value, okay? Um, so the 190,000, what does that represent? That represents how much we actually expect to collect, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at some specific numbers. Let's take a look at some journal entries. Oops. Okay. So at the end of the first year, so this is our first year of business, so that means our allowance doesn't have any balance yet. The a company estimates bad debts at $5,000. All right, let's review our steps. So we say, how much do we want in our allowance? And we're saying $5,000. How much is in our allowance? Well, it's the first year of business, so it's zero. So we want 5,000, we have zero, so we're gonna need to make an adjusting entry for $5,000, okay? Remember our adjusting entry, we're gonna debit bad debt expense, and we're gonna credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts. 
Okay. That's our income statement account. That's our balance sheet account. So what this does is it brings our allowance up to the amount that we want it to be, 5,000. Okay, so this is gonna look like what we just saw. So our current asset section now is gonna look like this. We have accounts receivable, 100,000, right? It says accounts receivable are 100,000. And then we're gonna say less the allowance if we want to put the whole name, it'll be the allowance for uncollectible accounts, but it's $5,000. And this is going to get subtracted. We'll underline that so we know that we're subtracting. And what's going to give us, it's going to give us the difference between those two. 95000 is going to go here. And the 95,000 is what gets added into all of your other current assets. Okay. So that's our balance sheet presentation. Okay. So that's our estimate at the end of the year. So that's one journal entry we might have to make. Now, what happens when we find out that a particular customer is not going to pay us? Customer is not going to pay us. So that means we're going to write off this account. Okay, so the next year we find out that this customer can't pay us the $500 that it owes us. The account is written off. Now, what did we say? How do, what do we do when we write off an account? Let's go back just to remind ourselves. We write off an account. When we write off an account, we debit the allowance. We set up the allowance for estimated bad debts, and now we have a real one. We have somebody who's not paying us, okay? All right, so we're going to debit the allowance. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Debit the allowance for uncollectible accounts. And then we're, what are we going to credit now? So what's happening? The customer is not going to pay us. If the customer is not going to pay us, then we shouldn't have a receivable anymore, right? Because we don't have a receivable. So we're going to credit accounts receivable. Remember, accounts receivable is a asset account and we're reducing the asset we're bringing it down because we're not going to collect it anymore okay so the write-off entry looks like this debit the allowance credit accounts receivable okay then what happens if the customer later decides that they want to pay us so they have a turnaround and they decide they want to pay us because they want to do business with us later so they send us the five hundred dollars they owe us okay so you might remember how to record a collection of an accounts receivable. Think about that for a minute. Hopefully you said um, you debit, you're collecting a receivable, you're getting cash, right? You debit cash, and I'm putting this in the second one for a reason, and you credit accounts receivable. That's how you record a, a collection of a receivable. Now, what's wrong with that? Why am I putting it down here? Well, we can't collect a receivable that we don't have, right? So we can't credit accounts receivable because there's nothing in there. We took it out. So before we can record that collection, as usual, we have to reverse this entry up here. So here we're saying, okay, we're not going to collect this guy's account. And now we're saying, whoops, yes, we are. We are going to collect that account. So now we're going to reverse that entry. So we're going to say debit accounts receivable for $500 and credit the allowance $500 okay all right so that's the end of the first video um, I hope you find that helpful where we walk through accounts receivable and the journal entry so those are basically all of the journal entries that you're going to see when you're dealing with accounts receivable so this one is your estimate at the end of the year then you have a write-off and then reversal of a write-off and collection okay all right so in the next video we're going to take a look at how we um let's come up with this um this amount of this journal entry here okay all right happy studying for your accounting